day and welcome to an ace wear in action for Ohio Career Centers. Hello, Chuck. Hello, Lori, and we'd like to welcome Carrie Fife from Pickway Ross, who's going to be kind of setting in and keeping us honest and sharing some of her thoughts. Um, this is a this is a kind of a combo webinar. At one level, we're going to be talking about the two new tools, which is what we promised. But there are a couple of folks. Uh, some of you are are not yet Aceware users, and so I promise to do kind of a bit of an overview of of uh, the student manager back office and AceWeb, and so we'll try to do uh, two things with this. We'll do the um, um, new goodies that specifically relate to JVS and career centers, but also do a bit of an overview about AceWare uh, for your regular course management. Uh, and again, Carrie's here um, as a user of Pickway Ross to kind of keep us honest. So Lori, if you'd want to um, Give me uh, the slides. I will. I will turn it over. And start. while I'm doing that, I'd like to remind folks that if you have a question throughout the webinar, you are welcome to put something in the question answer box. It will not disturb Chuck. I'll hold them until an appropriate moment, and then we'll chat about them. Sounds good. And again, I don't have Lori. Lori has a list. Um, uh, we're going to do a little hands up real quick. So, of the folks who are attending. Raise your hands if you do if you are not an Aceware user. Lori knows this, I don't. So I'm just kind of curious how many of the folks who maybe I visited with at ACTE about looking at Aceware as a new software are setting in today. Newbies. I love newbies. <laughs> and for those of you who have not used the Citrix software before, there's a little yellow hand on your toolbar. And if you raise it, the fingers point up. If you lower it, the fingers point down. You click it multiple times, it goes up and down like it's waving. <laughs> and Lori gets dizzy watching it go up and down. Right. So, all right. So we got a few that are uh, uh, folks who haven't yet gotten on board. Yeah. Very we good. Have. All right. Well, so we've got a couple. I, I mentioned earlier we have a couple of agenda items. One is to introduce uh, existing customers and the uh, folks who are new to the new tools for uh, tracking, and again, they particularly they are financial aid module and the course bundling. Uh, we can talk about attendance tracking, transcripts, and then really reporting. Um, thank you, Lori. Reporting issues, and again, I confess, I, I promised some info on uh, IPEDS reporting and some AWE reporting. With stuff going on, I did not get much chance to go through specifics. But for folks both existing and um, new or prospective, uh, I'll share with you some of the tools we've got that are integrated in the base system that I think will be helpful for reports. So again, um, for existing customers now, there is a there are some additional files you need to, to get. And so call your tech. A rotary. What is that, Lori? What is that device <laughs> on the screen? It's, it's the oldest cell phone in the world. <laughs> yeah, right. With the red phone, right to Aceware. See the there you go. Up? That works. I love it. Um, but I'm going to actually now flip gears here and go to um, the general one. And again, this is now going to be so existing customers set tight. Um, I'm going to actually show you some new things in uh, 7.2 that you might not be aware of, and so hopefully we'll do a little training for existing customers and folks who are not yet users uh, will have a chance to get an overview. Again, at ACTE last week, uh, we're kind of crazy, did not get to visit with everybody, and so I promised I'd give a little bit of a general overview about Aceware. And again, Carrie, I'd I'll ask you to. I'll give you my my shots as far as what I think we can do, and then I'll let you uh, make any comments or amens or or uh, yes buts in this process in a, just a second. So uh, the first thing I would like to talk about: what are the deliverables that we like to provide to a customer? And I guess our whole purpose in being is to help you become more productive. Whether it's serving students, generating courses, counting the numbers. I, it's helping you become more productive doing what you do. 
and uh, not only uh, try to improve the speed, but improve your accuracy so that you don't have to correct things. And then also, certainly, uh, we like to feel that we give you a comprehensive set of tools uh, that you can use in a, a variety of the jobs that you're doing as part of what you do. Uh, we provide convenience for your students. And again, I know uh, Carrie just recently got the online registration module. Some of you have it, some don't. Uh, but with the online registration module, your students can enroll anytime, any place, can pay online. And the system has the ability to adjust what you do to meet different audience. audiences. Uh, reporting. And again, we, we mentioned iPads, and, and I'll show you a couple of things about the reporting. Um, we, we like to think we try to, again, give you quick report tools that you can get data quickly, but also a full-featured report generator that lets you do a whole lot more things. Uh, events, fees, flexibility, I think a variety of activities you're doing. Uh, certainly marketing. And again, whether for career centers, um, you know, whether you think marketing is part of your business or you're, you're turning away business, but generally um, trying to help make sure that you've got enough students coming in to fill your classes is certainly part of any kind of activity. Financial, show me the money. We, we like to think that's core and center to it. And then finally, as a new user, our prospective user, I, I've always kind of felt that we work pretty hard at trying to provide pretty good customer support. So, okay, uh, Carrie, that's kind of my shot. You want to chime in or uh, highlight or add any other items you might want to mention? Um, I just think that we do an awful lot of reporting, and you know, all those things are very important, but some of the things that have been a um, big issue for us at our center is trying to match up what we're putting into student manager with the things we need to pull out on the reports. Okay. So I think people will be real interested in that. Okay. Okay. And in terms of, and again, that's part of the whole business of setting the system up, and uh, right. we'll get into covering that. Right. So again, I, as far as what I think Aceware provides is we like to think the tool to help you do what you do. A um, couple of notes about uh, the company. We've been around a while. It has been. We've come out of the continuing ed, the non-traditional business. Um, pleased to have long-term clients and again think we're big enough we can kind of help you out. Uh, real quick by way of again overview. Um, the um, Manager has two components. There's a back office piece, which um, is the administrative staff access. And then there is a web component, which you can add on. Um, and again, for new customers, uh, it's basically around $13,000 per piece. So $13,000 for the manager, another $13,000 for the web. But what that provides for you is one integrated view of your data with real-time data updates so that you don't have to create a separate website to promote your programs. As you put data in the back office, the data goes into the system. Um, and I guess deliverability again, we think it, the power of a local service system with the real-time customer self-service registration that you can get with the web system. Um, the reports, and we're going to talk about that a bit more, report writing, preferences, talk about speed of entry, financial reports, and marketing uh, tools like integrated email. And then wrapping up to go to the live system now, the idea of data-driven web pages so that when you create a course in the administrative part of your system, that course is ready to be enrolled in uh, for the for your students. All right, I'm going to roll to the demo now. And we're going to, uh, I've already logged in. Uh, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to go ahead and escape out of this. And I'll show you how you actually would run the demo. Uh, so we're going to go to, I think this is my Ohio demo down here. It's Ollie demo. Where's Ohio? I changed, here it is. 
Okay, so a shortcut on the desktop launches the system. You log in as a user. Of well, course, have the ability to set up users. Behind us. I'm sorry. Your screens are just a little bit behind. Okay, so tell me when you see the name screen or the the main screen there. Uh, we're still on reporting for all user levels. Aha. Oh my gosh. There we go. Now we're on. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness, that was several screens ago. All right. Uh, and you're with the student manager 17 now? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot our web has been very slow today. Too much wind. Um, too much wind. There we go. Um, all right. So what I had what I had done, and I'm going to minimize this to kind of show my desktop. You see in a desktop, Lori? Yes. All right. That uh, your back office application is a shortcut on your desktop that points to the system. Okay. Now, uh, inside the system, navigation, fairly clean, the big items, names, courses, registrations. Um, you can, we'll look at names first. Um, looking up records, type in the last name. Um, I think we've got Sharon Leisure here, if we've got some folks from Wayne County here. And we've got Sharon's record. Now, this is where, Carrie, I think let's kind of um, jump in here and kind of go over what it is that you're using on the fields. Uh, because for we've got a lot of <clears throat> demographic fields to store data. You've got gender. Uh, here's one called non-traditional. In demographics, too, education level, ethnicity. How many of these are you running, um, a carry in your data screens? Carrie, uh, you can unmute. We, we're, we're, we're trying to get you back online. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had That's to okay. No, on. I appreciate that. That um, actually helps with the audio. I didn't quite know how to use it, obviously. <laughs> You're um, doing good. Let me just look here at my demographic screen. Um, well, do you have do you have your window up? It might be yeah, easier. I do. We can make you, uh, Lori, make make Carrie the presenter for two seconds, and let's show folks how you have your screen set up. If you don't mind, Sherry or, or Carrie. No, I don't mind. I'm yeah, just yeah. Go ahead and do the um, do the show my screen now. Okay, I just found a staff member instead of a student and that, um, that. to show you. This is the demographics one here. Um, probably is what okay now hang on we're different. not seeing I'm not seeing now we're with you we're with you okay, now. okay. Um, demographics one you know you can see some differences there and how we have it set up okay um, and I don't have a split screen to see the original version and no that's me, okay uh, but, but this is the, the useful part now okay let me just make a comment uh, for those of you who are watching you saw my screen and you'll note on on Carrie's I'm going to get a Miss Fife screen that she's got a couple of different labels on her front screen, and that illustrates the fact that you can modify labels for the screen to match up with the kind of needs you've got. So let's see demographics too, Carrie. Um, and we've tried very hard to match up things that we knew we were going to have to report on. Right. Again, and a lot of this stuff is iPads, isn't it? Uh-huh. Right. Right. And so the codes that are the drop downs, again, you can define the codes based on how you have the um, how you have the, um, uh, the the requirements set or state requirements are. So the right, only yeah. thing I'd think of, uh, Carrie, on that age group is generally you have people in for a fairly short time frame, right? They're not with you for a long term. They're usually here nine months to a year. Right. Um, the age group, there is a mechanism to report age based on a birth year, but it would be easier with your groupings if that's the way the feds uh, call for them to probably just have a specific age group. So. Yeah. 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 Um, all righty. Well, um, do you use any of the additional info fields on the right above you uh, demographics, that additional info area? Yeah, sure do. Um, this is where, you know, these are other things that are on our application. And, you know, they're on our application because at some point during the year we have to report on it. Okay. Um, okay. So, you know, whether or not they're a dislocated worker, displaced homemaker, okay. you know, those type of things. 
and again, all those things on there are ones that we can we can report on. So, right. all right, I'm gonna see if uh, there is any chatter at this point, Lori, with questions from folks there about uh, how this is set up. And and again, Carrie, uh, Carrie's worked pretty hard at setting this up, and I think I'll give you credit. I think this is a pretty uh, pretty complete set. Now, the only thing, dislocated worker, displaced homemaker. I think in 7.2, go back to main and click on, actually, Carrie, click on your preferences up in your toolbar, right above, below tools, the hand in the folder. One over to the right there. Down, bingo, there you go, preferences. And go to names on the names tab there. Uh, I was thinking that we had a couple of things like Displace Homemaker were fields on the the, uh, the occupation uh, or the demographics too, but maybe you've got them all you've got oh, them all okay. laid out there. I'm not sure. I haven't you know compared it too much. Sure, like homeowner some of these, and again family type. Well, I guess that's not not one that's part of your group. All right, you can abandon this. And for those who don't have ACEWARE, and even folks who do have, do remember that you can modify those codes and, again, get them to match up uh, with the kind of data that you're trying to do. One of the things that I'll say for the existing customer set is that as we work more on understanding the iPads and the, the, the changes, which is a moving target, uh, we'll probably try to come up with a recommended data organization uh, sketch, like for those of you who remember, well, HEI reporting, uh, like here are here is the recommended standard practice for those. So uh, that'll be something we'll be working on. So I think that would be helpful, Josh. Sure. Yeah. And, and again, it's looking at some of these reporting areas are going to be easier to, to, to deal with than others, and I, that's the stuff we can share. Uh, Lori, any, any chatter, any questions that we might want to let Carrie, respond to. Otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab can have you grab control back for me. So I was pleased to see you go to the additional info tab because people yeah, we can't hear you, Lori. Come on, customization we can do. Right. Um, all right. Let's put me back if you'd offer to make me the presenter. All right. Um, back to the data screen uh, with the idea of the elements uh, from the standpoint of customers. One of the things I'd want to highlight is, or potential users, is that we've got some things like a customer callback area, where you can put in a callback to be reminded to call a student back if you've got to go back and provide some service to that student. There is also a history field where you can go in and put in notes as to what you talked about, had a, a, a conference visit uh, with her. And again, no spell checking here. You'll have to kind of do that yourself. So you can put in notes about the student, special needs. Uh, again, all part of uh, things that you can track about your students. Um, well, let's take a look now at the uh, course screen. Uh, and again, setting up courses, uh, 11S, I swear, manage 102. Um, all records that you're trying to track need to have a course in the system. Uh, records are able to have a, um, get my pointer back, minimum, maximum. You can track hours. Um, you can actually create attendance records. Um, trying to see, yes, we're going to create attendance records. This is the attendance module. So if we wanted to look at all of the records for the students on a given day, you can see the schedule for the day, uh, or you can see the day, you can see the student, and then the hours for the day, you can choose to fill in the defaults. Now, Carrie, you use attendance module, right? Yep, 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 uh, yep. Yes, yep. we do. OK. See, I, every once in a while, I'll, 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 I'll catch you here. So, so that the codes here, as far as uh, why, why? Why is she not here, there, here? 
So you can create the codes as to if they're missing the class. Rob Magoyevich, uh, we don't have a uh, jail is not or reality TV, and so he gets an F for the day. So again, you can modify these codes and use them, of course, in, in the reporting. Um, hey, Chuck, can I ask yes. a question? Is there a way for instructors to log in and add that information? At this point, there is not an instructor login for attendance. Um, there's an instructor login for grades, final grades and total hours, but we don't have the attendance tracking uh, exposed for instructors on the web yet. Uh, okay. that's, that's probably going to be on the list after conference here. So That'd be great. Yeah. Um, okay, so base information about the course for people looking at web display. Uh, the description area is where you put in the course description. Uh, you can do materials, you can have contact info, and you can have prerequisites. So again, if you've got sequence courses, you that lets you do that. Um, other kind of things, of course, general notes for um, uh, fees, variety of fees. You can assign instructors, track their pay rate, their schedule, track their evaluation ratings down here, what would be their, their summary scores for evaluations put in course comments, and then this is that web component. So that when you're putting together a class and you want to publish it on the web, all you have to do is put in the data, hit the publish register, and you can actually see what that course is going to look like on the web. So again, we've now jumped to the web view. Uh, this is what a student could see about the course. Now again, Lori, how slow are you catching up? You there yet? You see in the screen? No, nope, not yet. Wow, OK. Oh, we've got part of it, or at least yeah, I've got it part is, of it. And again, do, do, do yell, whoa, uh, when I'm flying away here. So, uh, but, the, but the point of it is that, of course, you get a real-time check of what's going on, and you don't have to create other data forms to put it online. Um, other oh, things. It, it went by so quick, Chuck. We finally saw the whole thing, and you Oh, and then I closed it? <laughs> All right, we can bring it back up. Are you with me now? Not yet. Yeah. Interesting. It closes quickly. It just it, it displays slowly. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Uh, and we'll come back. We'll come back to this as far as when we go to look at the web in a in a minute or two. Uh, again, we only have about. I'm only going to do five or ten more minutes on manager before we get to the new features, which is what you came here for. So, I I hope I'm not doing the bait and switch. Other quick elements again about the course. Talk about the quick tools. And that is quick reports. Now, from the course, you can see a lot of info, the minimum, how many are enrolled, what the main fee is, the total due, total paid, uh, information about the course, who created it. Uh, but the quick reports, student list, you can get a quick instant view of the students. Um, you can run quick reports. So attendance roster, name tags. Um, let's do an attendance roster. You can generate certificates. We'll do a faculty contract. Um, and basically, now again, now tell me when you see the report. Uh, Ready to preview? There it is. Wow, OK. Carrie, you same, are you same, same on the same schedule? If it's? Uh, yes. Yeah, just Lori and I on the slow side, so. Uh, but the idea of the check boxes. Do you use a, an attendance checklist as well, uh, Carrie, at your place? Yes, we've customized it. Customized uh, it. So. But absolutely. You bet. All right, so now we're going to run certificates. Now this is for existing ACEWARE customers. You'll note that when I did certificates, we're showing now a selection option. So what this allows you to do is if you've got certain people who didn't earn a certificate or whatever you're going to hand out to them, you can do a select option. It'll bring up the class schedule over the students. And based on their grade or their status or just from what you know about them, uh, you can say, well, they did or they did not meet the requirements. Well, Sarah Palin was off selling books, so she wasn't in class. And um, 
President Obama was out selling uh, the uh, recovery program, and George uh, Rob Blagojevich is in jail, or should be, or in court. So those three didn't attend, so we're only going to print for those who did attend. So again, that allows us to save on paper and, and uh, track your printing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And let's run to the two things we were going to show specifically. And that is the financial aid module and the, um, and the uh, course bundling component. And so uh, financial aid module now, and again, for existing customers, that is a module that we're offering as an upgrade. It's part of the upgrade. Um, that's going to be an enhanced feature, no charge. Um, and you'll need to get a couple files from your tech uh, to, to add to the system. The way it works, and I'm going to see if I have Carrie in. I don't. I'm going to add Miss Carrie here. Carrie 5. Pick away. Is it hyphen Ross? Uh, yes. Pick away Ross. We're going to add that. We're going to put in the address. Pick away Ross. And the zip code carry is? 45601. 601. And you'll note you put in the zip code, it automatically knows where the rest of you are. We'll indicate what kind of a program she's with. You can put the number of employees, number of size. There's spots for comments, spilling information about the company. But once we do that, we've got all the address information, uh, PW, or we're going to abbreviate your email. So we've added to Carrie. We track her marketing code. How did she find out about the program? We can track her administ her job type. Is that something you're using as part of your reporting, Carrie? Is uh, the job type or the organization type, are those fitting into any of the IPEDs or state reporting, or is that more for your internal marketing use? The we haven't done a whole lot of that yet. We're mainly using, um, you know, the firm information for if we need to bill an agency for something. Okay, all right, and and that works. Uh, the interest codes, and again, from the standpoint of marketing or tracking students, you can create all kinds of uh, interest codes. Uh, that you can tie to students and, of course, use those to uh, market a program. So we wanted to do her birthday. We put 0101 um, 69. And again, if, uh, if you're using birthday field to track age as opposed to, uh, you know, a user-defined field with the drop-down, one of the recommendations I have, unless you actually need a birth date for statutory requirements, would to put in 0101 and their birth year, this lets you do age reporting, but it doesn't get to be as sensitive a piece of personal data, uh, which a real birthday honestly is. So I'm going to put in the female, the education level, advanced degree, white, single parent, we'll say no, and then again, depending on the other codes that you might need. So we put in some codes for Carrie. Um, all right, now let's talk about financial aid. The financial aid, now everybody, <laughs> existing ACEWARE users who are looking at financial aid can now pay back attention because this is what you're going to be able to get. There is Yes. Okay. Um, Kara, I'm getting a message that's saying we're having technical difficulties in rejoining. Are you back with us, uh, Lori? Yeah, I had the same message, but I never lost you. Never lost you. Okay. Well, it maybe yeah. is just the speed of the system. I see uh, it too. Okay. Well, I, I, can we get a confirmation from folks in attendance that they're with us? Yeah. I'll if somebody type a quick text note. Kind of hate to 
not that Carrie and Lori aren't important, but I kind of want to make sure we're Yeah, people saying it's slow, but they're still here. They're slow, okay. Yeah. All right, well, this is the Financial Aid Award screen, the, the, the fifth or sixth or seventh revision. Um, the first thing you do when you land on the screen, if someone is going to get an award or you're going to record an award, you need to create a record in this particular field. And so um, if we do add an award, we then go to the drop down and, and you can define the little plus button is the code that means you can create the values that will be in the drop down. So if Miss Carey is getting a Pell Grant, we'll put in the date it's awarded and her expected family contribution is going to be $9,000. Payment type, uh, we'll define that we'll have a code called Grants and Scholarships. Total expected, we'll say it is $2,500. Now, at this point, we'll save it, and we have a bona fide uh, record of a financial aid expected award. Now, to create a draw record, uh, you use the plus. And for those of you who saw the first draft or the second or third draft, you had to do some double clicking here. Well, now you've got a nice window that shows you all of the draws related to this grant. So we're going to add a draw. We're going to add two draws. We'll say one would be expected on May 5th. So here you're, you're about to come into money real quick here. And we'll say you're going to get 1500 at the start. Now, the expected draw will only show the um, amount you're expected and the notes received and applied will actually occur when you assign that draw to some courses, which we'll show you in a second. So we're going to add another, we'll finish the other draw, and let's say that was going to be on July 1, and that'll be 1,000. Whoops, I better make that 1,000. One. Still, I'm not going to be in the right place. One, zero, zero, zero. All right, so now we've got 1,000. So I'm going to save that. And that gives us the draws. Now, you can have multiples. You can have a Pell Grant. You can have a, um, a Perkins and have multiple financial aid awards. You can see them all within this. And that's what this tool right here is, all draws. This will show you all expected draws for all of the programs. Now, can you see my pop-out screen, Lori? Not yet. Not yet. See, I'm, I'm getting better at this. There you go. Tell me when. Yep, right there. Wow, OK. And the idea, this just gives you a full, if there were Perkins or WIA, you'd see them all listed for the students. So it gives you a, 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 a quick view of all the things open for the student. All right, so that is the idea of a, a, a recording a grant or a scholarship and putting in expected draws. Any um, any questions on that one? All right. Now let's say that Carrie is going to enroll in a class now. So we're going to add a registration for her. And we're going to put her in the, um, we're going to have to find a class. We're going to put you in the cruise. You've always wanted, do we have a cruise going on? Um, I've got a bunch of courses that Introduction to Management Information Systems, and I'll need to create the course fee here. That's Why not a cruise. Have... You promised her a cruise. Well, I did promise a cruise. I'm sorry, Carrie. I'll have to give you a rain check on that. We'll say there's a $2,500, a $2,000 fee for that. And um, online course. So now. Uh, we'll need to registration fee, $2,000. So she's got a $2,000 charge for this class. Um, when we go to make a payment, for, about incidentally, and I, for those of you that don't use Aceware, this is then you saw the name screen, you saw the yellow screen, which is the course screen. This is the registration record, which shows a student 
Jerry Fife enrolling in this particular class with this particular fee. Uh, if there were additional charges that don't happen to be for this course, you could add additional charges to the class. You can do fee adjustments. So again, adjustments on the fly if there are credits or supplemental charges, uh, we could add an additional charge for miscellaneous of five bucks uh, and, and add that to there. Um, it would track the CEUs, the hours, and the grades. Um, if the student is wanting to know who else is in the class, they can view the, uh, you're the only one in the class thus far, Carrie. Uh, they can look at other students in the class. And then if you've got related courses, uh, there are no other related courses. You could view related courses. All right, so now we're going to make a payment. Now, this is back to this financial aid draw component again. If a student has any financial aid records in the system that have not been already drawn, uh, they'll show up here in the financial aid link, and you'll see, you'll see a financial aid dollar amount. You guys back with me, Lori? real time? Yes, we are. OK. So um, the I button will actually let you view the status of what the financial awards are for this particular person here. Uh, now that's not updating itself here. Um, well, OK, close. But when we click on financial aid, we'll now see the different uh, draws that we have to work on. Now, it's not the first yet, but we'll give Kerry the credit of the benefit of the doubt. And we'll put in an X by the one that we're going to draw or apply to this class. Uh, Matthew tells me he's going to work on making this a nice little sexy checkbox. So we'll control F4. And so what that's now done is applied that particular grant uh, or draw award to this particular class so that at this point it shows that we've got one payment. We can look at the pay info. This was a grant, a Pell grant, and now there's a balance of $505. And again, so for that second payment, you can either, if you've got another financial award, uh, you can add a second payment with another financial award. You can make a payment by check, cash, credit, billing to a third party, uh, however you, you want to bill that to Aceware. We're going to give you this for helping us today, uh, Carrie. So uh, we'll let you bill the balance of that to Aceware. And so we've got you in. So anyway, that is the, uh, I guess, quick, uh, quick review of the new elements on the financial aid tracking. Uh, Matthew has been building some reports. I don't know that we've got uh, reports that are specialty reports. He's been building some functions that allow us to run reports on this for students. Uh, so you can kind of show a student what's uh, you know what's expected, what do they have, uh, what do they have in the uh, be basically a chance to look at uh, their status. So now if we're looking at the draw details. And, and are you with me now, Lori? Yeah. Uh, did, did you see the flow of that, or did that go by too quickly? I think it went by OK. OK. So that we went to the student's record, looked at financial aid, and clicked all draws. Now you'll note that there is a record that we received, or the student has received that draw, or that we have. Aceware University has received 1,500 of this draw, and that the course number that it was applied to is referenced in the uh, draw details. So uh, we're able to kind of tell or track where this money is being applied to. Um, all right, well, I'm going to stop here and really beg for some questions related to the financial aid piece. Um, we'll cover the, um, we'll cover the, um, bundling in a second, and that won't take very long. But I want to make sure, because this is one that everybody's going to get if they want it, and make sure they're, um, you know, have any questions about how and why and what. Again, this is still version number, I think, three or four or five that we've worked on, and it'll still probably be adjusted and tweaked a little bit as we move forward and getting feedback from folks um, on, on the system. So.
Any I think Rebecca from Canton asks it better than anybody. Is there a place to put the actual received date? Well, the receipt date. Uh, you're you're talking. Well, let me see. Uh, the receipt that the grant or the, the receipt that the student has applied the money. Now, uh, on the last one, if you're talking about when did the student use the money, the receipt is really tied to the payment info. So we actually will tie the award to a particular payment record. This is a payment record for a student, and it has an ad date uh, as to when this payment record was assigned. Now, if the question is, do we have a date in, I'm going to jump back. Are you still with me? Yes moving through financial aid, um, is there a, okay, say Matthew, where'd we go? Let's try Perkins, let's try Pell. It's not wanting to update itself. But if the question is, when did we get the $5,000 Pell Grant uh, money from the feds, uh, I don't have a date for that. We've got an award date, um, you know, when it was received. And uh, Matthew, I think, is setting in on the webinar. And uh, if I hear, if, if it has to do with when did the grant of $5,000 get assigned to the university, there would be probably, we could just certainly add a date here to say date received, you know, date grant received or date. I, I don't know what you call it. The Fed money was was drawn on, and I can we can we can clarify that later. But yeah, there isn't any at the master level. We show when the student used the money, and that's on the receipt. Uh, but as far as tracking that grant backwards, again, we may need a couple of other data fields here that uh, uh, to to record that. Other questions here. Uh, Debbie wants to know, will we be able to process reports based on student demographics? In other words, what demographic what got what kind of award and uh, how much? Yes, and um, I actually, um, the, the reporting side, I'm going to get to that one, Debbie, in a second. Uh, hold that thought. Um, I got, a, like I said, a five-minute course bundling, and then we're going to talk about reports at the tail end. Any other questions on the financial aid piece? I don't think so. All right, let me get back to, OK. And Matthew, I don't know why it's not uh, displaying. It shows the award, but it doesn't show the detail there. OK, uh, bundling. One of the issues that, uh, and Carrie, this is, this is, again, if you guys like what we're about to show you here, you need to thank carry because it was the Pickaway Ross staff who really kind of got us thinking about the idea of bundled courses or packaged courses. And I think, Carrie, it had to do, was it nursing program or you had several that you had that you, you, you were working with? It's pretty much all of our career development programs. Career development, okay. Yeah, are basically a series of courses that make up a program. Right, and so what I'm going to do is uh, just show you some of the courses in the ACEWARE system piece. So if, if we had an ACEWARE users training, okay, and as you, as you look at this, you'll see Mastering Student Manager, Processing Cards in Student Manager, um, Advanced Report Writing for Student Manager, um, Using Catalog Builder in Student Manager. You know, these are all classes relating to a certification, if you would, in Student Manager. Well, if we were bundling these as an ACEWARE certified technician and we wanted to include a special rate for $900, $995, you can take all five of these programs or that that is going to include a bundle of X number of programs. Um, before, what, and maybe there was a special rate, you'd have to go to each individual class, register the student, make the fee adjustment, go to the next class, register the student, make the fee adjustment. Well, Carrie is saying, you know, the way that we can do an in mass enroll in the multiple courses. Well, Matthew came up with the idea of creating a course type 
of package. And for Aceware users, if you've used um, Aceware before, well, if you've used Aceware and you've done things with uh, workshops, the I whoops, let's find workshops again. Aceware Users Conference. There we go. Aceware Users Conference. When you create a class that's a workshop, you can have multiple breakouts. And that one didn't have workshops, so let me abandon and go to the one that does. Uh, workshop class management in the Millennia Conference. Okay, uh, you with me, now, Lori? I've been running around. We're at a conference. We're good. Okay, and it's got a workshop type that you can create breakout sessions within the conference for different topics, uh, and each then and people can sign up for a given breakout session. All right. What we did was for the for the uh, bundling is that we created a new type of class called a package class. And when you make a class a package class, there's the button now over here says package courses. What you can do is go into your course list, add a pack add a number of courses, one, two, twenty, that you're going to say that if they pay this nine ninety nine 9.99 fee, uh, fee, we're going to automatically enroll them in these five classes without having to do any other work. And the nice thing is the money will all be tied to this one registration. So if you've got adjustments for fees and all, you'll have just one place to apply the payments to. All right, so we've got a package course. I'm going to uh, enroll. Let's see who's in this class. We have. Sharon Leisure and Dave Letterman are currently in the package. Uh, we'll go to Miss Fife and enroll her in the class. She's already in one class. We're going to enroll her in the ACE or the 11S ACE Tech class. Class has started. We don't care. They, the, the, the class doesn't need a date. You can put a begin date on the certificate program or the bundle because it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, that's a grouping question. We don't want to group. So right now we are at the Aceware certification course. The total package price is $9.95. If we wanted to add testing fees, if there were additional fees that might be optional that come with it, exam fee, testing fee. Carrie, are there optional fees that you might want to add separately to the bundle price that you might want to track? Carrie, you with me? Yeah, we do. Um, we add books and tools. OK, yes. so the idea of books, um, let's see if we've uh -huh. got a book fee here. That would be typically. Now, I'm going to illustrate something else that one of the options, and this is for current Acework customers as well. If you want to add a fee on the fly, and you don't want to have to create a, 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 a drop-down adjustment, it's more of a one-time thing, you can toggle Alt F4 will let you open up this field. Alt F4. And I'm not sure it's okay, let's try it again. Alt F Alt 4, Alt Oh, Alt 4, not Alt F4. Alt read the notes, Chuck. Okay, now what I've done is open up this and I can type whatever book or I want here, and it's going to be $27.50. So we've added that as a fee to this particular course. Now, normally, you will set those fees up as part of the class so that when you're setting up fees, you're going to put additional fees here for a calculator and additional fees for um, supplies. Calculator is 15 bucks. When's the last time someone bought a calculator? Um, so that you'd normally put them as an additional charge. All right, so we're setting up the class. We've got the person being registered. We're now going to make a payment. 
and we might apply that last draw. We'll say, what the heck, we're going to again let her have a chance to make this last draw. You'll note that the draw we did previously of $2,500 or $1,500 isn't there because we've already assigned it. So we're going to apply this last draw. And at this point, uh, we're going to add, we still have a balance of 22 bucks. And we say, well, Carrie, how do you want to pay that last 22 bucks? And she says, how do you want to pay that, Miss Fife? Credit card. <laughs> Credit she's gonna, card. She's going to pay a Discover card. And we'll put that in. So now we're going to print the receipt and close. Now, when you're running a this particular report, and this is the, the, the bundling routine, you have to use a special receipt. So we're going to use, oh, by the way, this is a, a, a email confirmation that we could send. We're not going to send it. Yes, we want to print a conventional receipt. And we'll call this the course bundle receipt. Now. If you look in the middle of the screen, it says, Carrie Fife has been auto-enrolled in five courses. Well, we only did one. Well, that's the bundling. We've automatically put her in to all five of the classes that are part of the bundle, but then also have indicated uh, that uh, she's paid the fees as part of the certificate program enrollment. So again, uh, the idea is you can make one step do the process of many. Um, so anyway, we got four or five minutes. I'm cutting it close. I'll just mention for uh, users that this is going to be a uh, like a $500 optional module. It will be an add-on so that if that's something you use and wanted to use, um, you'd be able to add that to your system. Uh, questions about the bundling before we get to Debbie and the course reporting part? Rebecca wants to know if you can give grades to each of the classes in the package. Yeah, oh, yes. The, the classes. Now, I only made one bundle registration for that certificate fee. But when we go to look at individual enrollments, Carrie has a record for every single one of those classes. So we can go into edit registration. And here's our advanced report writing. And Carrie gets uh, a satisfactory on that one. Ace Web and Student Manager, she gets an A plus in that one. Uh, so yes, each individual class uh, has the ability to put a grade for it. You bet. And that Any was the question? value for us. Yeah, I was just going to say that was the value for us because that way it also appears on the transcript. Right, and, and these we courses. To see that breakout. Yeah, let me go ahead and give you a B minus. Sorry about that, Carrie. You weren't paying attention on that day. And, and uh, this one here, you got an A, a again. So you're doing pretty good. And we'll give you a uh, B plus. Again, a little bit of chatter in the back of the room when you should have been paying attention. All right, so we've now done those for Carrie. Uh, we can run a quick uh, transcript now for her and take a look at what these classes are. And those courses will be on the transcript as individual items, uh, B plus A, A, B minus, A plus. Now, the ACEWARE Technician Certification Bundle doesn't really, well, I suppose you could assign a final grade. Do you give a grade to the whole program or just to individual classes? You know, like the? They could end up with a, um, like a GPA type thing. They'll have like a GPA. GPA, OK. Well, I didn't know whether or not you gave them kind of a final score on the whole program together. But I guess you're right. That'd be more of a GPA thing. So. And it probably depends on the school. Each school might do it a little bit differently. OK, OK. Um, all right, so anyway, that is the bundling. We can talk about that more later. Reporting. Um, now, we've shown you a couple quick reports. Um, one of the things I wanted to get at is in the iPads and in the state reporting, so much of that has to do with doing analyses of students. And we've got you know, 84 different reporting areas that let you run management reports, income reports, mailing labels, course rosters, course lists, room use list, income, catalog reports. We mentioned rosters, transcripts, name tag certificates, faculty contract agreements your invoice tracking, uh, accounts receivable, 
expenses and income, workshop reports. But this is where we want to go, statistics. So if you wanted to do an analysis, and I forget what Debbie had asked about, uh, Lori, was it gender or age? I'm looking back to see. Hang on. But, but anyway, we'll, we'll pick one. So we're going to go in and look at the names. Um, oh, it, she wanted to know people who got certain awards. Um, now, I don't have a query to do for certain people with certain awards, but I'm going to do it based on enrollments in a time frame. So what we first do in this statistical area is pick a category to analyze. So let's go down and do ethnicity. We're going to look at the ethnicity of our students for all of the people who took classes in a given year. And this is the filtering where we select what data we report. Course number begins, and we're going to look at 2011, our current year, about a third of the way done. We're looking at the report. Do we care about the money? Well, why not? Sure, we'll look at the money. So what this tells us now is that of the people in the database, we've had these many people nose count wise. We've had these many registrations from these people. And then what the average course fee is per ethnic group. And we see here our ethnic group averages is fairly similar. Not a whole lot of variation there. So that this is how you can take any element on the name record and do a statistical analysis of it. Now, there's a new one, and this is where I was um, uh, trying to get to with the iPads reporting, and I didn't get there all the way. But that we have in the deadbeat report area, which is one of my favorite report areas, it's really a registration level report. But we're going to run an analysis of interest co or of codes for a group of people. And we're going to run it again for the 2011 people. No, we don't care about the money. And we have a report called Code Analyzer. And this is a sleeper report that really, I think, for iPads can really be a great uh, tool. What it lets you do is to categorize, and there's some like notes at the beginning of it. Um, you, can, you can organize your data by, here it is, by zip code. You could organize it by city, by state, by age group, if you wanted to do age cohort. And then within each cohort, whether that's zip, that's age, state, city, county, you know, homemaker, non-homemaker, unemployed, not employed, however you might have it on the name record, you can then do a sub-analysis of different demographic data. So here we have on the sex, under this zip code, there are two males. In the ethnicity, there are two people with ethnicity one. Education level, there are two people who are at the five level of the uh, age group. And I'm looking through here. I don't have normally, and I just don't have probably a good data set here. Let's go to page two. Yeah, well, here we go. Down in zip code 65340. Are you guys with me, Lori? Yes. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Zoom in on that. Zoom out on that. OK. Um, what you see is that we had, of this group, three of them were male. Two of them were female. In the ethnicity, three of them were of ethnicity code 1. Two of them were ethnicity code 4. All five of them were at the same education level. And so again, this is the kind of thing that you can do out of the base reporting system that, um, again, as we're beginning to get a handle on the iPad's components, we should be able to help you create these code analyzed to reports that will group it by the category the feds want and then show the detailed breakout by every one of the main elements that they're trying to track. So I'm going to pause and take a breather. I don't think you guys have discovered this one yet, have you, Carrie, that you're aware of? Um, I know we looked at it the other day when we were working on an iPad report. Um, but we didn't have enough time to get in to it. Get to get to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I do think one, that could be very helpful. Right. I think this is one, and it might be um, Carrie and, and Sharon and several of you might be in the group here participated with 
us in the development of the financial aid module. Uh, Carrie, I think that what we'll do is we'll try to pull together a similar group this summer to talk about the iPads. And so again, every school has Debbie's kind of the iPads pro at Wayne. Uh, Carrie, I don't know who the iPads at guru is at your shop. Maybe it's you. But pull together three or four people and we'll, we'll try to work through this and try to identify that standard data set. And then I can start building a report like this that we'll be able to share with everybody. So That'd be great. Yep. Um, very good. Well, I think that covers, we're a little bit over schedule. I started a little bit slow. Um, I'm going, well, well, people are asking questions, and again, please, please write down questions. I'm going to multitask and show you the other half of the statistical reporting. Um, that is, this may not be for iPads, but for you guys as program managers, within the names record, you can also have a top dog report where you rank order by fees or courses taken the top 10 or the 20 or 30 or 40, 50 students. So if I wanted to know for last year who were my most active students based on how much money they paid, I can run a report, pick the course year to look at, and tell me who are my big spenders. And it'll rank order those. You can do the same thing for firms. Okay, now on statistics courses, there is a similar report like that um, ethnicity one that you can do for classes. So if you wanted to know by the subject code of the courses, what courses are generating the most money, uh, and we'll go to last year again, 1-0. So we got about another couple minutes, uh, and then we'll get to the questions. So this is a course analysis by the subject code, how many classes were offered, how many you had to cancel, how many registrations, cancellations, percentages, average enrollment, average course fee, the gross income, and the net income per class category. So again, that's the kind of stuff you can get just at the global management side of things. Lori, how are we doing with questions? Any chatting back on the bundling or because I think otherwise I need to wrap up and uh, let people go, and I'll hang around for questions afterwards a bit. Most of the questions that have come through have been specific, and I've answered them individually. Okay. We do have one last question. Do we run transcripts? Do We We just showed you a transcript a second ago. Uh, let me go back to that. Um, so there's a couple of different ways. There is a transcript reporting area uh, that you can run batches of transcripts, or you can go from the name record, and we'll go to Ms. Fife again. Under the quick reports area, you guys catching up with me? We current? Yes. OK, looking at quick reports, I'm going to click on additional report. And incidentally, there are lots of different quick reports on the name record, an envelope, a fax note, a letter, a transcript. And so we're going to run the transcript. And so, bam, you can do a quick report and generate a history of classes taken with grades. Incidentally, Carrie, if you wanted to do uh, grade point averages, you know, this particular class was four units and they got a grade of B plus and each unit is worth such and such amount, we can actually put a grade point score on a transcript. We have a tool to do that. Okay. Uh, now, we have a couple of standard scales, you know, the four point, uh, the 1.5 and the 2.5, and then 1.2.3 point, and then we have actually a 1 3 quarter and 2 and 3 quarter. So there's like three different grade point scales that you could implement. That'd be good. That. Now, we, yep. we leave the CEUs out of it. Right. And end. again, uh, back to the reporting, any report on here can be edited. So if you don't want to worry about the CEUs, we can actually, you can actually remove that from the report, and so it won't show up. I also um, have credentials listed as courses, and so as our students achieve credentials, uh -huh. we enroll them in that course, per se, 
and then it shows up on their transcript. All right, let me show you what I think we're talking about here. And the idea is that what you have done is create in the course record some particular credential program. And then when you do that and you sign a person up, what, what Carrie is saying, those, those credentials would appear as a course listing in their history. Right. Am I, am I reading it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. That's good. Uh, creative, creative work. Um, Lori, uh, we're way over schedule. I sure appreciate folks hanging around. Um, I'm still here to take questions, but I think this will end the formal part of the session. Uh, for existing customers, if you'd like that financial aid module, uh, honestly, give us till after conference. Um, we're all headed to conference this week. Um, we're going to be working on a couple things about that, and uh, a week from Monday. Uh, we should have a draft ready for you to start working on. Um, for folks who don't have ACEWARE, if you'd like to uh, schedule a time to really talk about specific issues related to your school, uh, let me know again. Uh, next week's a bad week, and so uh, I've got a little bit of time tomorrow, but just email me, uh, shoot me a call, and, and we'll try to work something out. Carrie, I sure appreciate you taking time to join us. No problem. Thank you. I, we, we appreciate everything you've done to accommodate kind of our needs in terms yeah, of No problem. Time. Again, um, and you're getting that muting thing down pretty well. I'm impressed. You do, you <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm kind of slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing good. Lori, thanks again. We're looking for Lori's out in Georgia, and we're in Kansas, so we don't get to see her that often. So I'm all excited. I'm going to get to see you face-to-face uh, -face as opposed to over the web this next week. So. Yay! Yay! Uh, and I think, uh, do we have anybody in the audience, anybody of our attendees who's going to conference next week? Raise your hand if you're going to join us in Vegas. Anybody? Anybody? Nobody. No. Uh, I don't know. I'm answering a question. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, just a couple, yeah. Well, good. Well, good. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to let Lori uh, answer. Carrie, thanks so much again. I'm sorry we're not going to see you in Vegas, but maybe there's next year. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye, everybody. I'll let Lori answer questions, and I'm going to hang up the phone. And uh, Lori, call me back if you need anything. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.